Here's the real deal about having one. He smells like a pickle after his nap. I don't know where it comes from, not the diaper or the bed sheets, but from somewhere around the face, swept behind the ears or in the neck crease. I sniff around, but it's mysterious. And he hits me, smack in the face, because he doesn't have the words to say, I don't want chicken, or these shoes hurt my feet. So the right hand reels back like a pitcher winding up. The elbow cocks out at some exotic angle from the body, and he connects with my left temple. And then I hold his hand solid and hard in mine until he cries. The real deal is that I introduce him to the stick bugs in the backyard like he's Johnny Carson, complete with a drum roll on the wooden chair slats and a round of applause. Inside the house, I scrunch him up in my arms and we smush our foreheads together, eye to eye, until we laugh out loud. And he is the only one permitted to call me a horse. The real deal is that now I am terrified of death. In fact, I'd rather be a body and a head sitting in a chair, my arms and legs shriveled up by tumors or a new brand of flesh-eating disease. But God damn it, keep me alive because no one will ever love this boy like I do. And that's the day I understand the woman jumping off the sixth floor of the parking garage, holding her child in her arms. I understand the woman feeding Percocet to her daughters before she feeds a handful to herself. She's just a woman whose despair grew like a field of weeds. A mother who knew she had to go, and in her own leaving, had to take that thing with her that thing in the world she loved the best. <laughs>